recorded for our scripture. Reading from Luke chapter 3, verses 15 through 17, 21 through 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. a little time for my mic to get kicked in, I think. Sorry. It's a classic Peanuts cartoon. Charlie Brown says to Lucy, someone has said that we should live each day as though it were the last day of our life. Ah, cries Lucy, this is the last day. This is it. She dashes away screaming, I only have 24 hours left. Help me, help me, help me. This is the last day. Ah. Some philosophies, says Charlie Brown, aren't for all people. <laughs> Living each day as if it were the last day of our life is not a bad philosophy. Living each day as if it were the first day of our life might be a better one. 
Tomorrow begins a new year with exciting new possibilities. The old year is gone. The mistakes we made, the obstacles we've overcome will be in the past. A new year is upon us. Motivational speaker Danny Cox tells about a Broomhilda cartoon which her troll-like, naive, innocent little friend Irwin puts on a long-tailed tuxedo jacket, picks up a conductor's baton, and walks into the woods alone. Irwin steps up on the fallen tree trunk and begins to wave his arms to conduct. There's no musicians, only rocks, trees, and flowers. But soon musical notes come from the rocks, trees, and flowers, and the panel is filled with music. Finally, Irwin turns and confidently says to the reader, it's all there. You just have to work at getting it out. As we look at this new year, it's just arriving. It's filled with all kinds of possibilities. They're all there. We just have to work at getting them out. Jesus was becoming, beginning a new phase of his life. He'd been content to this point to work in the carpenter shop, perhaps providing for his mother and other family members since he was the oldest of the children. We have no record of Joseph after Jesus' 12th birthday. We might surmise that Joseph met an early inopportune death, but Jesus had met his responsibilities. His brothers could now look after his mother. Now it was time for Jesus to launch the ministry for which he was born. Some of you know the excitement of beginning a new phase of your life. The children are now in school, so mom begins to look for a full-time job outside the home. It's scary, but it's exciting too. Or children have just finished school and new possibilities creep into your consciousness, like starting your own business or going back to school for yourself or even moving to a new community. We all have our dreams, don't we? Some of them are unrealistic, perhaps. Some of them we'll never pursue. But most people dream of something better in life, something higher, something more exciting than the life that they are now living. Robert Schuler tells about a dream that his father had. And as you probably know, Schuler was pastor of the Crystal Cathedral in California, a huge congregation. His messages were broadcast all over the world. Robert Schuler was just four years old when he decided his life's goal. He prayed every night, Lord, make me a preacher when I grow up. Schuler says his father cried when he heard his young son's prayer. And 40 years later, Schuler's father cried again as he told Robert of his own secret dream. He had once prayed to be a pastor, but his parents had died when he was just a boy and Shuler's father had gone to work to support himself. So he changed his prayer. God, make me a minister through one of my sons someday. The Shulers had three children, but none of them seemed destined for the ministry. Years passed, and Mrs. Shuler bore another son, Robert. Through him, God answered Mr. Shuler's prayer. We all have dreams, don't we? The saddest day comes in our life when we give up on our dreams. Jesus' dream was to do the will of his Father. He had his calling to answer, a destiny to fulfill. Let's look for a few moments at this turning point in Jesus' life and ask what his example might mean for our lives as we follow our dreams. Note, first of all, Jesus' humility. We normally don't associate humility with following a dream. Perhaps we should. Jesus had a cousin in the ministry. He was not of the established church. He was a roughshod evangelist holding services out beside the river and conducting outdoor baptismal services. In spite of his unorthodox ways, it was clear that Jesus admired his cousin John. Later, he would say that there never lived a better man than John the Baptist. We don't know why Jesus went to be baptized by John. We know it wasn't because he needed cleansing of his sins. Perhaps he wanted to set an example for us, that the sacrament of baptism would become one of the highest moments in the life of a Christian. Maybe Jesus looked upon John as a mentor. Maybe he wanted to show his appreciation for what John was doing. We don't know. 
but think of the humility it required for Jesus to be baptized at John's hand. John recognized it. Why, well, I'm not even worthy to unlatch his sandals, John explained. May I suggest that if we have a dream in your heart that God is calling you to pursue, that you begin as Jesus began, with humility. It's a standing joke, of course, that men won't ask for directions. I wonder how many men have gotten not only lost, but also failed to achieve their dreams because they will not turn to someone wiser, someone that's been down that road before, and ask for help. There's a story about a mountain whose stone face seemed to stretch upward forever. The mountain had almost magnetic effect on the boys who came each year to a nearby camp. All of them were anxious to have a chance to climb to the top. The counselors warned them not to try to do it by themselves, but each year some foolish soul tried it anyway. This year was no exception. While part of the group went to the baseball f field for softball, two of the youth snuck off to attempt the climb. Before long, they gave up, unable to master the tricky cliff. The next afternoon, the counselors took the boys on a climb up to the mountain, and everyone made it. Why? Because the counselors who had made the climb hundreds of times before guided the younger boys, telling them where to hold and where to step. We call them mentors, don't we? People who have life experiences which they can share with those who are setting out on the journey for the first time. We need mentors here at the church. When someone comes into our fellowship who has been out of the church for a time or who are new believers in Christ, people experienced Christians need to surround them with love and make their new faith experience one of growth. Certainly our new member committee offers its support. And certainly when we are beginning a new venture, whether it's a new job or starting a new business or even coming to retirement, it would be helpful if we could have someone who's been there already help us prepare for some of us that will require a humility that we may not now possess. And that's a pity. Jesus was the Son of God, and yet he never lost his humility. Notice also Jesus' sense of urgency. Once Jesus made the decision to begin his ministry, he didn't dawdle. The pages of the New Testament moved swiftly from his baptism to his time of testing in the wilderness and the beginning of his ministry. Once the decision was made, action followed swiftly. Dr. Michael DeBakey is one of the most famous names in modern medicine, an esteemed cardiac surgeon. Dr. DeBakey was the first person to perform an artificial heart transplant. The doctor's skills were in constant demand so he couldn't afford to waste time. In the field of cardiac surgery, a few seconds can mean the difference between life and death. Waiting around is not an option. I wonder how many dreams are never realized because the dreamer never gets into action. If you were to follow the stories of immigrant families who come to this country, you'd find episode after episode of astounding success. Why? One reason has to be a sense of urgency. They simply cannot afford to fail. There's no safety net to catch them. They don't have the social networks that others have, can rely on. They have only themselves. Film producer Sherry Lansing, former chairman of Paramount Pictures, tells that her greatest role model was her mother. Her mother escaped from Nazi Germany when she was 17 and came to this country she sold dresses and learned to speak perfect English. Perhaps when Sherry's father died of a heart attack, she saw her mother cry and mourn and then take over his real estate business. Sherry remembers of one of her mother's office managers saying, you can't do this. You don't know anything about real estate. To which her mother replied, no, I'll do it. Teach me, I can do it. Sherry says that's her attitude about life, too. Teach me. I'll do it. What a fortunate person Sherry Lansing is to have a role model like her mother. Her mother did not consider failure an option. She had a sense of urgency. 
Jesus had a sense of urgency about his life. It's clear from time to time that he went out to the river after being baptized by John, that his face was now set toward his mission in Jerusalem. That did not mean that he didn't take time for reflection, sharpening the saw, as Stephen Covey dubbed it. In fact, he immediately went into the wilderness for 40 days of testing, prayer, and self-examination. But nothing could delay him, discourage him, or defeat him. And that brings us to the third step in achieving our dreams for the coming year. Jesus did not look back. In fact, in Luke chapter 9, verse 62, Jesus says it pointedly, no man having set his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus knew there was no turning back. Tranquil days in the carpenter shop of Nazareth were soon only a dream. This is who he was and what he had been called to achieve. The threats of public humiliation, imprisonment, and even death on the cross did not dissuade him. He'd committed himself to God's plan for his life. He would see it through. Many years ago, Alistair Begg preached a revival service at a homeless shelter in London. Begg was not an experienced preacher, and the men showed little interest in his sermon. But they fell into a worshipful silence when Begg's colleague, a young woman named Mary Fisher, began to sing. Mary's heartfelt faith shone through her song. Years later, Mary moved to Zimbabwe to serve as a missionary. And in 1978, London newspapers reported the tragic story of a rebel attack on mission and school in Zimbabwe. Men, women, and children were tortured and killed, and among the dead was young Mary Fisher. Found among her possessions was a tape of Mary teaching some of the young African students a Christian song. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. To hold his hand and walk his narrow way, there is no peace, no joy, no thrill like walking in his will. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. It's one thing to sing about total commitment to God's dream for your life. It's another to follow it until the end. There are very few dreams that are achieved without paying an extraordinary price. There are many of you who have discovered that in your own lives, the sleepless hours, the endless stress, the self-doubts, and the near failures. How can we expect to achieve our worldly dreams without constant sacrifice and expect to give less in serving Christ? We face a new year, a new beginning. Let's begin this new year with a sense of humility and urgency and a commitment to give our very best to whatever noble dream God has placed in your heart. May it be so.